walk up here, we call it diabase. This is a nice big boulder. Some squirrels have been sitting here doing their, their nutting. So it's part of the natural environment of this site. This rock, it's a volcanic rock, what we call igneous. So it bubbled up from the earth as hot lava and cooled uh, in ancient times. It weathers down into smaller and smaller chunks and to eventually it's pebbles and little clay soil, a very thick clay soil that sometimes is a dark gray color, unlike the red clays of most of the Piedmont. So this rock is different in its chemical composition. It's got weird metals in it and it's a lower pH. So it's not as acidic as the normal rocks of the Piedmont. And that's why we, we have these plants here like the coneflower and Agastache nepotoides and other plants that in other parts of their range actually grow on calcium or dolomite derived soil. So it's very unusual for the Piedmont. And the other thing here is you probably will not find a blueberry or anything in that family Ericaceae. Again, the soils are so circumneutral that the acidic loving plants aren't happy. So if you're in a place in North Carolina with no members of that Ericaceae E family, you are in a special place. And here we are today. We love to see these big oak trees. This is a beautiful old white oak with this platy bark. It's a very thick, thick platy bark. That helps this tree be resistant to and tolerant of fire. So control fire is used to manage the site and keep the understory open but we love these big beautiful oak trees the two most prominent ones here are white oak and then post oak we'll take a look at a post oak this is a big beautiful post oak here probably a 70 to 100 year old tree again like white oak the bark is very fire resistant the leaf is a big thick leathery leaf kind of with a cross shape so that's how you would tell this from white oak the other components of what would naturally be a woodland here. There's a lot of uh, smaller eastern red cedar and there's been a lot of American ash but sadly we're losing the ash to the emerald ash borer. Here's an absolutely beautiful shagbark hickory part of our dye based woodland. Long dramatic shaggy bark on this tree and again the thick bark helps it to be resistant to the periodic fires that come through here to help keep the understory open. Um, this is a short leaf pine. The cones are smaller and the needles are shorter and there's usually two or maybe three in a bundle. Bob Lolly always has three. So this, this tree has got kind of a smoother bark, it's flaky. And then down here at the base, you can see how it got a little fire scar, but it's perfectly happy with that. This is a nice component of our, uh, what would be a oak, hickory, pine, uh, dye base wood. So here on these plant conservation preserves, we have to keep an active watch out for invasive exotic species. This is kind of a new one. It's called the Yungia japonica or Asiatic false hawk's beard, something like that. They're, they're little rosettes. They kind of look like uh, a lyre leaf sage, but the leaf shape is different and they don't have the purple color. So when I find these, of course, you can't get them out of every sidewalk crack, but when I find them in natural areas, I try to remove the whole plant and take it off site. Because they're very sneaky, they can set seed. They come in early, I thought they were an annual, but now they seem to be growing bigger and behaving like a perennial. So this is a real threat to our uh, natural areas and native plant populations. Which is a highly invasive form of clematis. It's a vine, it's evergreen, has a very rapid growth rate and it tends to smother out the plants under it. So we try to eliminate it anytime we find it in the preserves. see the railroad iron here so this was originally cleared and opened up for a railroad track that probably carried tobacco from northern Durham County into the tobacco factories in town the railroad as you can see was abandoned uh, a water line was put in here 
and that reopened the site and brought more attention to the site. And then just a couple of years ago on a native plant tour of the site, uh, Leslie uh, Stark discovered the sumac, which is another federally listed plant. It's very unusual, apparently likes the dye based soil, but it mostly likes it open. So this area had grown up in loblolly pine and then it was cleared and then the sumac, which was already naturally here, began to flower and thrive. It's a great success story in terms of management of the site, being aware of its history as an open area on the dye base and then the recovery of this population of the rare sumac. We got really lucky today. This is a beautiful little orchid, brownish purple. It's got no chlorophyll, so it must be parasitic or saprophytic. It's got some other means of getting its nutrition other than having green leaves. It's called the Pexelectris spicata. So we're right here in a diabased jumble of boulders. And here's this beautiful little orchid. This is truly one of the most beautiful plants that you can find in the diabased derived soils around northern Durham. This is a tall larkspur. This is Delphinium exaltatum. And it's a beautiful and just remarkable plant. It likes the lower slopes, which are more moister, mesic type of areas, even though it's in the diabased woodlands. It's an unusual phase of that woodland community. It makes it harder for them to survive because probably fire would not have been as frequent here. They're found on roadsides and they have a hard life there with potentially mowing and herbicide use under power lines. It really is an extremely threatened plant as well as a very beautiful plant. Agastache nephitoides, which is the yellow giant hyssop. They have square stems. They're in the uh, mint family. And these have a very woody stems that last sometimes two or three years. But you can always feel the four sides to the stem. And generally the new growth comes up at the base of those stems. This one is about maybe five feet tall. It is really a giant hyssop. It goes through very large swings in population size and it's probably related to fire. And once the prescription burns have stopped, then it begins to decline. And following a big prescription burn, we have an explosion. This is a native clematis, and it's unusual because it's not a scrambling vine. It's almost like a little shrub. And it has this beautiful seed head with these arching veins that come off the top of each seed. So people call it curly heads. It's a really cute name for it. it shines in the sun, kind of a light golden or copper color. So we're here to look at a population of Echinacea levigata, the smooth cone flower. And this is basically a Piedmont and Ridge and Valley endemic. It goes from the limestones of Virginia down through North Carolina on diabase rock and down into Georgia and South Carolina. Very scattered populations. It's federally listed as endangered. And here in the preserves around Penny's Bend, we've done a lot of management and augmentation of these populations to be sure they survive. This looks excellent today. The flowers are a little bit beyond their peak of bloom. The very narrow petals hang down, they decline. And the leaves are very smooth name would indicate. So this is a really special plant and we're really proud of the work that the Friends of Plant Conservation and the Plant Conservation Program have done with this site. It's really special. We are at the back of Williams, which is separated quite a bit from the front. And if you look across the slope that goes up, you will see the back of the Freudenberg property. And that is where we found some smooth cone flowers, three plants. And uh, we have planted seeds from those and have put them here on the back to grow. So we have, I think, 21 or 22 plants um, that started out as seeds from the Freudenberg one. Deer are um, much more active in the back of the area, so we have to spray and uh, we put cages around most of them when they first get started just to protect them and give them a chance to get uh, established. Herb, what's in your deer spray? There's a lot of rotten eggs. 